Scott Peters. Two years ago on election night, Scott Peters didn't know if he'd won a seat in Congress. We're in for a long night, but I think it's going to be a good night, so thanks everybody. It took three days for him to find out he'd beat incumbent Republican Brian Bilbray by just under 7,000 votes. Everyone knew it's going to be a tough race. I've had uh, eight election nights, three have lasted a week, and two of those were in 2012. So um, we win the close ones. This time, his re-election could be just as close. A poll this week shows the Democrat in a statistical tie with Republican Carl DeMaio. The race has attracted more than $2.5 million in outside spending. It quickly turned nasty with TV ads like these. Congressman Scott Peters is worth over $40 million, one of the richest in Congress. But Peters wanted more, voting himself two huge pay raises. Another politician who owes the Tea Party everything. Carl DeMaio's exactly what's wrong with Washington. The district's voter registration is almost evenly divided. So both DeMaio and Peters are spending a lot of time painting themselves as moderate and each other as extreme. What I've laid out is a very stark difference between me and a record of uh, being a problem solver, being rewarded by my colleagues with leadership positions uh, because they trust me, and Mr. DeMaio, who's been really the local version of the Tea Party, someone who's been on the outside uh, throwing uh, rocks in. And I just don't think we need any more of that in Congress. National security crisis. DeMaio wouldn't be interviewed for this story, but he defended himself against the Tea Party label during a recent NBC San Diego debate. Oh, wait, 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 Scott, let's, let's just stop right here. You want to continue to apply labels to me because you can't defend your own record. Mm. So you can call me names all you want. All right, I haven't sat there and called you names. I have issues that I disagree with you on. And there are, there are uh, uh, differences in our records in the way in which we've pro approached issues. But to sit there and say, I'm just going to call my, my opponent a Tea Party right-wing nut job extremist, Scott, it's dishonest, it's divisive, and it's what's wrong with politics today. In a KPBS questionnaire, both candidates stated very similar stances on many issues. Neither wants to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Both believe climate change is caused by humans, and neither wants to restrict a woman's right to an abortion. But Peters says DeMaio's moderate stances are new. Elect Peters to Congress to protect women's health. Peters points out he's been endorsed by Planned Parenthood, while DeMaio has never filled out the group's questionnaires. I think two or three weeks ago, he held his first press conference on women's issues. Didn't even have anything on his website and uh, came out supporting Lilly Ledbetter Act, which has already been on the books for five years, so it's about time. Uh, supported the Republican uh, birth control um, idea, which provides birth control over the counter, but doesn't provide a, a guarantee that it will be paid for. Um, and, you know, would take away overtime in, in place of compensatory time. And these kinds of, that was his women's program. Uh, and that's uh, three weeks old. Do you know Scott Peters? DeMaio repeatedly attacks Peters for taking government perks while serving in Congress and on the San Diego City Council. Privilege Peters, a millionaire, elected to take a taxpayer-funded car allowance to pay for his luxury BMW. This is the same Privilege Peters that lives in this luxury home and double-dipped on the taxpayers by taking his pension early. The whole thing's ridiculous because the whole discussion doesn't create a job, doesn't educate a kid, doesn't provide for anyone's retirement. Peters says he took the same car allowance as every other council member. He donates his city pension to libraries, and he returned $140,000 of his city council's salary. KPBS verified each claim. Peters says his biggest achievement so far in Congress is helping San Diego's delegation work well together. The nicest compliment I got was when Darrell Issa told the Regional Chamber of Commerce, we have five members of Congress here who like each other and can work together. Uh, that's a big step forward for our delegation. Uh, and there are a lot of things that have come out of that in terms of border funding and military issues and veterans, taking care of veterans. DeMaio told KPBS's Amitha Sharma in June that if elected, he hopes to focus on a fiscal agenda. The national debt, getting uh, jobs created, uh, making sure that we provide quality services, uh, particularly for our veterans, for example, uh, just recent news, news issue there. Uh, but the list goes on and on of programs that people look to that are not meeting the mark, and that's where our elected officials should be spending their time and their energy. The election is on November 4th. Mail-in ballots were sent this week. Claire Tregesser, KPBS News.